or get in and get that booty get out. Leia, where are you? Cool. The tech that they have is incredible. Just who's pilot? Who's piloting the ship? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Din ends up surfing an enemy fighter to the ground. <laughs> yeah, yeah, lawyer of the creed. Oh no, galaxies are so big. The armor just gaslights them. Coincidence that it's a coincidence? Coincidence. Previously on The Mandalorian Season 3, Episode 4, bo saved Paz Vizsla's kid, and she now wears the mythosaur pauldron on her shoulder, and we also saw Grogu's traumatic escape during Order 66. What would you think about the episode? Season 3, Episode 5, I give it a 7 out of 10, uh, which is a bit higher than I thought I was going to give it, but I did like the battle. like the battle, like the action. Uh, seeing the Mandalorians fight, even though there were some questionable tactics in there, I enjoyed the battle. Uh, it still feels like setup to me, like we're building to something, yeah. specifically that they capture the town, they now have like a base of operations to take out Mandalore, or retake Mandalore. Uh, didn't like their tactics, the Mandalorian tactics in town. That annoyed me. Um, also, I'm not sure proper resource management by the new New Republic is evil, but they're kind of making it sound like it is. We'll talk about that. Overall, I enjoyed it. 7 out of 10. What did you think? I gave this episode a 5 out of 10, which I thought was a bit generous because I really like Mandalorians. I really like the lore and the the story in the, the the place that they hold in the universe of being these badass warriors but they feel like kind of clunky idiots just running around and they just happen to have been from a planet that has really good armor like are they tactically wise are they individually skilled in combat like they kind of just walk around um also do they have a creed or do they just do whatever the armor says because like bo takes off her helmet. She should be kicked out. But uh, but the armor is like, do it because you like me. And everyone's like, all right. Like, what? Did they have a cult of of their religion? Or do they have a cult of, like, they just do whatever their armor says? Also, the armor. What, what, what is she doing going into melee combat? Like, she has this unique skill set amongst all of the Mandalorians of of forging Beskar. Like, she needs to stay home and, like, don't die. And, and train, a, train a pupil. Train a someone, an apprentice to take over your job when you you know retire so for that reason for the, for those reasons five out of ten like make these mandos badass please hmm. i think i feel less of a connection to mandalorians than you do so i wasn't as critical but i, I read all it. these all it. the mando books and yeah 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 <laughs> all right that being said let's still fun so let's watch the episode Let's get into the episode. Right, let's talk about it. So this is one of the opening shots of the episode. Um, and I was looking at this ship over here. Mm -hmm. Coming in a little hot, you know. Jeez, isn't it going to fly forward into the town? Coming in Maybe blue flame it. hot. Yeah, well, what is going on? Yeah. So the thrust needs to be down, not forward. That's right. So I'm being nitpicky, but turn the engines off. I'm going to be nitpicky too. Clear the landing pad. There are boxes underneath you. Oh geez, boxes, whatever that is. Imagine if Cable one of the one of the foot, one of the imagine if one of the landing feet lands on yeah. the boxes and like it tips the whole ship over, like just crash the ship. Yeah, clearly landing pad. Yeah, do we have a droid walking around? One of those garbage can droids. We got whatever the hell these things are. Yeah, imagine if it if the ship landed on one of them pointy boys. Now you got mm -hmm. a puncture. Oof, not worth it. Plus the engines are hot. Hot. So you tip and then it gets thrusted into this crowd over here and we have a tragedy. Oh no. The ground is painted red. No good. Yeah. Nice nice city though, like at the base of this mountain. That's nice. I guess the mountain is barren though. <laughs> I mean it's like cool lava lava flows and stuff. Okay, okay. That's cool, I like it. Actually in like a hundred years that soil's gonna be super rich. They're playing yeah. the long game there. Playing the long game, yep. Yeah. So oh. this is hold on a second. God damn it. I'll just edit out so, that swear. Yeah. <laughs> this is uh Grief Karga's office up in that mm -hmm. tower. Mm -hmm. And everybody in Star Wars has a surveyor data IT guy making sure all this data is up to date and you know reflects ground truth here. Uh but they don't seem to get any appreciation. That's right. What the heck? 
Somebody did some hard work to make this. That's right. And it has to be constantly updated because there's new construction going on, uh, new plots of land being given away to people, you know, for them to work, you know, ownership changes and all kinds of stuff. So it's a lot of maintenance. Um, And I haven't seen them doing like aerial drone droids. So that means that this data is collected by hand. Like somebody's employed to do this, taking very careful maps. Yeah. And you know what? In the Star Wars universe, the droids are like people. So they require management as well and praise and teamwork. They're part of the team. So somebody is being underappreciated. Look how cool this is. I know. So good. Mm Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've ever tried to look at like property lines, like using the city maps and it's, it's it's so hard to read. Like give me this 3d projection of like, Oh, that's what I'm looking at. Perfect. I mean, this is, this is modern tech that is in the process in the modern world. This is tech that's being in the process of coming online. And a lot of the records are not digitized and Um, we don't have no lag. Uh, t- map on augmented table reality stuff yet yeah not yet mm-hmm. uh, it's actually an extremely difficult problem to solve so that being said Very augmented cool. reality is coming along we're coming getting there along, yeah although total aside a lot of the companies like microsoft and google have abandoned their ar research so star mm-hmm. wars isn't coming just yet Oh yeah, so let's, uh, let's go with Grief Karga and Gorian Shard. So Gorian Shard flies into town. He's gonna take it, not sure why. Uh, and Grief Karga have this like back and forth negotiations with bluffing and stuff. And all right, let's go. There we go. Gorian Shard, I knew that Corsair looked familiar. The voice sounds like Grief Karga. All I see before me is a pampered nobleman. And- okay, that's an insult to Grief? Call him a pampered nobleman. Sounds kind of awesome to me. Yeah, I want to be a rich dude that rules over town. <laughs> Why is that an insult? <laughs> oh, oh, no. I'm insulted. All I see Don't is someone high class. my hospitality for weakness. <laughs> is that what you call gunning down my helmsman in cold blood? He shot first. Now I will shoot first. Navarro is now under the protection of the New Republic. You. So, he, so Grief says that Navarro is under the protection of the New Republic. Shard better know that's false for a fact, right? Yeah, otherwise you're rolling into the New Republic gonna come down your throat and fuck you up. Right, they have capability to do that. So also, can happens. we take a moment and say that Grief Cargo is like, you shot first, so I'm gonna respond, and now I'm shooting first. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> you're responding to somebody else. You're not shooting first, you're, you're, you're shooting second. False. He declared the battle complete and then a restart. So oh, he's restart. now shooting first. Okay. 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 Oh, okay. S- school, is, schoolyard I, tactics. I'm going to attack you for a completely separate reason. <laughs> now I'm shooting first. <laughs> shooting first. And under the protection of Moff Gideon, Varro is an independent world. The Spinward Patrol passes through here regularly. Do you know what the Spinward Patrol is? Is that New Republic? It must. I think so. It must be. I think so. so originally, Navarro was under the control of Moff Gideon, under the protection of Moff Gideon. They're now independent, but he's bluffing that they're under New Republic. Hegemony. In the works, you know, we're, they're, we're allied to them somehow. Yeah. Somehow, yeah, okay. <laughs> the New Republic can't even protect the mid-rim. I thought Don't you... hail me again unless it's to surrender. So I think Gorian knows for a fact that the New Republic not so powerful. Right. And so he cannot defend the Outer Rim. Cannot defend the Outer Rim, so he knows that Grief is bluffing. And he calls his calls his bluff. I just I'll liked bluff. the the back and forth. They're trying to out bluff each other. They maybe don't know a lot of information. It was kinda cool. Yeah. I mean, good job at being a pirate for this part of the episode. <laughs> yeah, he's gotta know what what is a viable target or not. Right. He completely doesn't take into account that Grief Karga has connections elsewhere. Right. Okay. All right. So the next, oh, this is cool. Mm. This is like the Republic Fighter Squadron's forward base somewhere mm. in the outer rim. Tropical forward base. So cool. 
I want to so be stationed got, here. I guess these are hangers and well, maybe they're not hangers. Maybe because I know there's a bar in one of these. Hmm. Why are the ships outside? And the ships wouldn't fit. Huh. These wings <laughs> wouldn't fit. This X wing over here is, and these ones, they're definitely not in hangers. Looks like yeah. something's under maintenance there. So maybe they can open up part way that they can roll up if you need to work in the shade, but otherwise they store their ships outside. Also, that sand is going to F up their ships. Just every time one of their yeah. ships takes off is just jet wash everywhere and sand blasting mm -hmm. everything. So the Republic has space capability, so they can choose where to put their maintenance facilities. Why would you choose a huge, well, I guess maybe not humid, but a, a wet saltwater sandy area wouldn't you choose like a moon with no atmosphere so you could store the craft outside and there's little <laughs> weather <laughs> you, you make the worst hr person <laughs> it's like like wouldn't you would you rather have your base on this like tropical island where people can chill and hang out you're like no 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 complete vacuum so if anyone ever messes up their helmet discipline dead just suffocate <laughs> well I mean, it's either that or they're in danger because the ships have. That's true. Been That's right. So, so if they're sand. on a moon with no atmosphere, they could probably trust their ships a lot better because their ships aren't degrading from oxidation and UV damage, mm -hmm. and and yeah. just gritty stuff. Here, they're getting UV damage all the time, the oxidizing on their parts, and then just sand mm -hmm. just blasting in in the gears and the paints all fucked up. I want to have my ship looking nice. I don't want to have sand messing it up. Yeah. I mean, I guess then pick on this particular planet. Where would you go? So you probably want just ten mi ten miles inland is <laughs> probably okay. <laughs> May yeah, maybe find a rocky place with no sand, low humidity. Yeah, well, it's not like okay. it's not like Hawaii is all sand. Like there's <laughs> there's not sand parts around. You can set That's up true. a base. That's true. Yeah. So I think this was a poor choice. It's a poor choice. That's Although, totally like the the survey team was like. I want to hang out here a lot. Let's set it up there. <laughs> oh, yeah. If you know what priority one, set up the bar. Set up the bar. We, we got, got a lounge. <laughs> got our tables. We got our lounge. Spacious. Oh, that's like a Star Wars the pool table. table. The guy on the left. Yep. He's got a stick. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. <laughs> so totally the surveyor's like, this is the spot. Bar goes oh right gosh. over there. Right over there. Right up there. <laughs> right, up, right up at the beach. I want to get that nice breeze. We'll put our yeah. trophies, our, our war trophies on top. Do you see that there? <laughs> look, look at the, oh, the is top that, that's the That's the top of no, an no. Imperial probe droid. Yes, yes, yes. And even higher, even higher on the shelves. Oh, oh yeah. Helmets. Helmets, yeah. Stormtrooper these are, helmets. These it's are like war trophies. Helmet. These are oh, more dead helmets. bodies. Good grief. Good grief. Wow. It's a win for the survey team. It's a win for the survey. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> did a really good job. But honestly, like, get me a volleyball net. We hang out on the beach, have a good time. Right. Give me a is clam there bake. I, there's totally some kind there's of totally volleyball a... Star Wars sport happening. Yeah, right totally. over here, right behind it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe down, to, to like down lower on the beach, down on the back Definitely, of the yeah. picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Honestly, yeah. this this is sick. This <laughs> is super fun. Yeah. However. The New Republic needs to delegate better. You got a forward base with a commanding officer who needs to know the intent of the New Republic with the power, I would argue, to make tactical and strategic decisions in his location without need to phone home. But let's take a look. They need to phone home. Captain Ted, we have been attacked by Pirate King Gorian Shard. I am humbly requesting the New Republic to send a patrol to clear out the Raiders. The situation is dire. Before this to Coruscant, request permission to intercede. You'll never get an answer in time. Then I'm just going to have to go there and talk to them myself. So this guy, I don't remember his name. He's sort of the commander of this air group out here. He mm -hmm. should be have the power to be like, I think this is strategically important and tactically important for this area under my command. Send them. Send the patrol. Right. He shouldn't have to phone home, but then he has to actually show up at Coruscant to have any influence over decisions. Right. What a waste of time. Captain Tavy here to see Colonel Tuttle. Lacking a colonel, 
And you are? Carson Tava, Adelphi base. You're a long way from home. I'm requesting authorization and backup for Adelphi squadron in dealing with the pirate siege on Navarro. Haven't heard of it. It does sound concerning. Excuse me, Colonel. Have you ever heard of Navarro? I have. I spent some time there. They have yet to sign the charter. Uh-oh. We can't leave them defenseless. Do we have a backlog of requests from member worlds that have priority? I don't think that this is an isolated episode. Navarro has reported account. So I just want to say, if proximity to the decision makers gives you power, then these imperi ex-imperialists have more power than That's right. devoted pilots in a forward base. That's right. That power needs to be delegated a lot better. Leia, where are you? In fact, this is military. So who's in charge of military operations? Akbar? Mm, yeah, I guess so, right? So yeah, he and, needs and to create a power structure within the military that delegates well, communicates up and down the chain, but gives power to forward bases. Exactly. The forward bases need localized autonomy. You can't say defend this area, but also check with me if you need to defend it. Well, you're not going to have time to defend it. People are going to walk all over you. You need to be able to trust your local commanders to command local stuff. Mm hmm. So here, mm -hmm. Elia Kane has more influence than, I don't know, don't remember this pilot's name. Captain Carson uh, Teva. Teva. Captain Teva is fighting ex-imperial people. This is an isolated episode. Navarro has reported accounts of stormtroopers in the streets. High fighters openly flying above. Because I'm hearing Moff Gideon never made it to trial. These events could all be connected. I think that's a bit of a leap. Really? This isn't a rebellion anymore. We have a structure now. Let's focus on what you require. I'm requesting authorization and backup for dealing with pirates on Navarro. Perhaps the leaders of Navarro need to understand why becoming a Republic signatory is valuable. Sounds like a rather imperial way of thinking. Thank you, Captain, for bringing this to our attention. Apologies, we can't do more. There's something dangerous happening out there. And by the time it becomes big enough for you to act, it'll be too late. The... The New Republic guy is so wrapped up in ideals of we've we've brought these former Imperials back into the fold. They're so wrapped up in ideals that they're not actually serving the people. My biggest problem was, okay, so this Imperial bureau, sorry, Imperial bureaucrat, New Republic bureaucrat needs to make decisions about priorities with limited resources. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the fact that he would prefer signatories over non-signatories I'm actually okay with that because there's limited resources. There's only so much you can do. Okay. I think the real problem is the fact that they didn't delegate the power out to this guy who's saying, you know what, that principle doesn't hold here. I need to make this decision. You know. Mm, agreed. Captain Tava knows the situation in his sector. Right. Mm -hmm. I guess that's that's core people holding power for themselves and leaving the outer rim alone. On its own. And that is imperial. Mm. That's imperial. I think my my opinion, I see you can disagree with me. I think Republic ideals is about decentralized authority with strong principles, whereas Imperial ideals is centralized power through fear. I think that's the definition of those categories of those governments. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So actually, the new Republic is kind of an empire. Kind of Imperial ish. Yeah. It's more than they think they are. Yeah. We're seeing, we're seeing the tides turn. So Captain Teva is unsuccessful on Coruscant. And so instead of giving up, he decides to go talk to the Mandalorians. Uh, so he goes to this planet. <laughs> and I was like, Bo, Bo, camouflage. A little bit. How about it? A little bit. Let's, Come on, Bo. He, <laughs> he kind, Captain Teva kind of knew where they were. But he's like, oh, there's yep, Bo's there ship. Is. There it is. Yeah, yeah. Easy. Teva, Teva explains that he's, as he tracked the R5. <laughs> But it's like, the ship stood out. <laughs> You're landing next to the ship, the one ship in yep. the entire area. Yeah. Where's Din's ship? He hit it. Come on, Bo. <laughs> mm -hmm. Also, R5, the R5 droid is like, I'm scared. I don't know what's going on. You can bully me all day. But secretly, he's like, I'm transmitting. I'm actually a spy. I'm fucking I'm actually a spy. <laughs> you I, thought I was weak. I got ice water in my veins. I'm fucking robot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So Captain Teva says, hey, Mandalorians, please help out Navarro. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. So Din gives a speech and mm -hmm. says, let's go do it. And then you think, what is this guy's name again? The big dude? P Paz Vizsla. Paz Vizsla. You think he's going to go against Din and he doesn't. And then he says, 
this is the way. And I was like, hold on, does anybody dissent to this decision? It's too late. There was, you can't, there was you no can't. room for dissent. You can't. <laughs> like, like if some, imagine somebody's like, um, I do, this is the way. <laughs> this is the way. <laughs> this is the Are way. going against the creed? But we're talking about deciding to go into battle, not about the creed. I agree with the creed. And now you're, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you've lost it. So you say, this is the way. And now you've been bullied into a battle you don't even want to go into. Mm -hmm. This is his sway. So yeah, they decide totally to go just, into he battle. They totally just bullied everyone else in. <laughs> he totally did. So on the way to the battle to save Navarro. So here's Din's ship. And Din here's ship. Bo's ship. And Bo all ship. The, the ground forces are in Bo's ship. And so they're communicating. The tech that they have is incredible. That's so right. So they're communicating across three locations. The troop place in Bo's ship, the bridge of Bo's ship, and Din's ship. With audio and comms with no lag in hyperspace. So here is the, the 3D projection and audio in the troop transport. So holographics as well. Yeah. Here's Din's cockpit with Grogu and Din. Grogu. Holographics. And here's the bridge with Bo. The armor, Paz Paz. Mm -hmm. just who's pilot? Who's piloting the ship? The technology is piloting the ship because whoa, this tech is incredible. That means they've got light speed within hyperspace. Right, they've got communications that are traveling faster than the speed of light when they're traveling faster than the speed of light. And the speed of light. Cool, cool. Okay, I don't understand how hyperspace works, but there you go. That's okay. I'm okay with that because yeah. like humans don't know yet. Maybe we do in the future. Maybe we do, yeah. Maybe we deal with Rotting. a galaxy far, far away. Mm -hmm. Rotting city. Yes, this is this is the pirates have taken over the city, but they are not managing it. Like this city is gonna fall apart. Look at all this destruction. Is anybody making sure the power is running? Anybody making sure that the water is running? Like without those things, like all the refrigerators, all the refrigerated food going to go rotten in a few days. Like these pirates are not making this a stronghold. They're just squatting. So if they're going to destroy the city, that's more of a plunder. So they would come in, steal all the good stuff yes. and then just leave and leave the place in ruins. But they're actually occupying it. So why occupy right. it and destroy it? I mean, if I can, you could destroy a bit to intimidate the locals, but at some point you need some fraction of the locals to make sure your power is running, make sure your sewage right. is running. Otherwise, the city's going to fall apart. And then the city's not worth anything anymore. Yeah. Or get in, get that booty, get out. So maybe they're just not that smart because here's this is a server at a local restaurant is bringing the pirates food and they just throw it on the floor. Watch, watch. Oh. Ah. They're like, you're so bad. It's like bringing us cool our that food. You're, cool that you're like a tough guy, but now you you now your food is on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Like why? Why? They like you, dirt food. Do, well, that's what you get now. Yeah. Let's see what food it is here. So it looks pretty good. It looks like a maybe some, some dried jerky food. Maybe maybe yeah. nothing specific, but. So they're sitting there. The waiter is bringing out their food. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing kicking your food? Ball, ball chin guy. <laughs> Why? Where's, yeah, where is he supposed to go? He's supposed to serve it the other side? Cut the guy a break. Yeah, I mean, he's just bringing the food in. Like, what, what do you want him to do? <laughs> so they're destroying the city for uh -huh. no good reason. And then basically anything that could be good for them, they're like, screw it. Nah. We're going to destroy it. Nah. I don't want to eat. Nah. I want to eat. I want to eat <laughs> off the ground. Hey, what, are you, what are you doing? Uh, Wild. So, funny. so in the episode, they kind of mishmashed all of the perspectives together. So let's look at these, the battle one perspective at a time. So we'll do the ground forces first. Let's take a look. So ground forces drop in. Drop into the city. Point, point. Yeah. Kick, kick an ass. 
the Mandalorian way. Straight down the middle of the street. Okay. Yep. What a bro. What a bro. I want these little alien guys. My home yeah, security. Absolutely. Good muscle discipline. Good, good. They get surrounded. They get surrounded. They get surrounded. They fight as if they don't have jetpacks. Get 3D. Where does he come from? Dropping from the sky, standing in the walkway. Delayed entry. This is mowing him down. Still surrounded. Just, just lining up as targets. Just lining up in the walkway. Just not hugging walls. Not going around buildings. Not going to the rooftops. Yeah. Just, just standing in the walkway. <laughs> so if you're aiming and trying to kill people, the Mandalorians here, you don't really have to aim. Just no. sort of hit this general area with like spray fire. Anywhere in the alley. Just, yep. <laughs> There's, there's even barriers here. We got boxes. None, none of them are ducking behind cover. <laughs> yeah, so this, this has made it, this made it feel like for me that they're like, tactically just idiots. But they got the best armor around, so they just take shots and they're fine. Like, I wanted to see them fighting smarter, it's fighting more like, mm -hmm. how can we with a few people mess, mess up an, an encampment? So the tactics are: we've got the best armor. We you can shoot at us. Don't matter. But they still, they're not invincible. They're not invincible, right? Exactly. Let's see what else they do. Let's see what else they do. The gun emplacement. Ooh. Yeah, this big boom mode. Ooh. Get vertical. All right, all right. Immediately shut down. Ooh. Standing out in the open. Standing out in the open. So then the armorer mm -hmm, mm -hmm. comes in mm -hmm. from somewhere. From we somewhere. we actually didn't understand where the armorer came from because we didn't see her in Bo's dropship. She sort of came in as a loner on the ground, maybe? We're not right. sure. <laughs> right. The best we could figure out is that she was dropped off outside of town and then walked in on her, on her own because she also yeah. doesn't have a jetpack. So like Bo like That's landed right. for her. <laughs> like, should I go in the main battle? Like, no, put me down right here. Like. I feel like you should go in the main battle. Like, do you trust my station? <laughs> Put me down here. <laughs> and she's like, I know there's going to be a gun emplacement in that tower up there. So I'll just wander up there. But I'm just also not going to tell anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> I want this glory. But look it's at also, this place. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. No, what were you saying? You want to say something about this place? Yeah, look at this place. Like, okay, so we're at the entrance that someone would walk into Grief Karga's office. We can see just right in front of us. That's like the balcony entrance there. Mm -hmm. um, but then to the sides, it's solid walls. I mean, I guess there are like little windows that are fairly high up. But mm -hmm. actually, like this place is super tactically vulnerable. All you would need is to have the, the Mandalorian to come in from like the outside and land in the parts of the balcony that you can't see and then attack in. Throw a little, so throw a saying, little thermal detonator. So this door here is the only way out to the balcony, and this is mm -hmm. walls. Mm -hmm. So we mm -hmm. go to a different perspective here. Just jumping ahead. So there's yeah. the door. And then these these balconies have no other entrance other than that door. Yeah, and, and, and no line of sight. So if the Mandalorians could do a little jump packs up to the top, yeah. they could get up there without the people inside knowing that they're there at all. And then just shoot yeah. in the middle. And they have the jetpacks to do it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was weird that the but, the Mandalorians just stayed on the ground and just took pot shots up there. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go back let's and watch the, the fights. The fights are consistent, see the though. Yeah. It is cool. Yeah. Oof. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> he grabbed him. Oh. Oh. Upside the face. Oh, he's dead. She cleared it. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Okay, 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 wait, 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 wait. Two, two, two <laughs> things. First, first thing is that I don't think I don't think the armorer should be there at all. Like she has some skill sets in forging Beskar that I we haven't seen anyone else do. So if she gets injured and and perhaps loses an arm, perhaps dies, mm -hmm. like is that Beskar forging technique gone forever? Like she needs to have an apprentice and she needs to get long range weapons and stay out of battle. Yeah. Especially we've concluded that the biggest tactical advantage Mandalorians have is the armor itself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If she gets so hurt, she, nobody gets new armor. Yeah. 
So she needs to pick up an apprentice or three immediately. And have them compete for her affection. Yeah. Yeah. Get that competition going. Because you need mm-hmm. them. Plus, mm-hmm. what if you need you need to expand and you need you know yeah, armors yeah. in different locations? That's right. Or, or even if you don't need different locations, but you just need more production than one armor piece at a time. You got, yeah. you got a, a get a covert of like 10 people and they need armor. You're like, well, there's a waiting list. <laughs> Sorry, dude. Yeah. So, yeah, I agree. She shouldn't even be there. She's too critical yeah. to the Mandalorian fight right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Plus, she's not even trained with guns. She's coming at them with like, I don't know what they are, pincers for metalworking? Tongs. Like, this, tongs? Yeah, I don't know. And a hammer, <laughs> and a hammer. Uh, Not even a, n- there's nothing sharp. She's only doing blunt force. Let let the real for ground forces take care of it. You're too important. You're too important. All right, let's continue. And then Paz does this thing. Let's let's to him. All clear, advance. So he says, "All clear, advance," and then. He, he immediately, immediately, he immediately starts shooting. He's like, "All clear, advance!" Gets everyone out of cover, and immediately starts shooting. It's not all clear. It's not all clear. <laughs> to me, all clear means there's no need for any more shooting. Right. He should just say advance. All clear, advance. Shooting, shooting, more shooting. Idiots. So like, <laughs> I feel like he doesn't know what it means to be all clear. Maybe Mandalorian all clear means something different. Ah, Mandalorian all clear means there's still enemies around. Keep shooting. Still, yep, keep shooting. I was also oh. confused. After they call it all clear and they start immediately shooting, mm-hmm. they're in this courtyard area, but then somehow they jump to the outskirts of town. That's right. And they sort of surrender. Okay, I guess okay. Okay, I, 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 think, I think I get it. Okay, I get how the Mandalorians got there. Because they have jump jets, they have, they have rocket packs. The peep, the bad guys though, they had to run a very long distance from the center of the courtyard out to the edge of the city, which tells me that they like jogged, ran, and the Mandal- mm-hmm. Mandalorians just played with them. Like <laughs> the battle has transitioned. Maybe that's what all clear means. The battle has transitioned from like a serious battle to let's play with our food, let's play with our prey now. And we're doing this for that psychological only, damage. Makes the sense. Only yeah. conclusion. It's like a cat. <laughs> yeah, and in and the answer is at the end of the battle they did win. <laughs> so so I can't I can't talk shit about Mandalorian tactics. Like they did win with like a zero zero losses. That's right. They did take hits, but because it hit the Beskar, there was no casualties. They're totally fine. I mean, uh, the big guy got hit directly from the gun emplacement. No problem. He got back up. Called the all clear himself. That's right. That's right. <laughs> So that was the perspective from the ground forces. They drop in from Bo's ship, take the town. Mm. So let's look at it from Din's perspective. Ooh, maybe. So he harasses the Corsair, they send in the fighters. He's just mocking them. One, two, three, four kills. Like three kills so fast. He draws the Corsair away from town. Another kill. Okay, so this also, when, when they go into these daring canyon runs, why do they follow through the canyon? You yeah, just what? pull back and so go high. Yeah, you, know you, you like just watch the guy in the canyon diving around. You're like, well, he's got to come out eventually. I, yeah. I know where the canyon goes. I can just wait at the end. And he's in so much danger. He could he could make a mistake mm-hmm. and hit the canyon wall. And he's dead. So you don't have to put yourself in danger. Just wait till he comes back up. Yeah. They want for, they want the in close kill. Mm. So those fighters leaving right there. That was Bo coming in taking shots at the corsair and they got they got called back so they aborted the canyon run this is the ship so they can call back right here and still killing killing comes back and killing slaughter and then we were really confused about this um 
Din ends up surfing an enemy fighter to the ground. <laughs> yeah. We don't know how that happened. It's like, it's not good enough for him to just shoot him from his fighter. Like, he wants to get out there and make it personal. So somehow he ejected from the Naboo fighter and allowed Grogu to land it. And then jetpacks onto a, a fighter coming by, surfs it down to the ground in glory. If you play, he even shoots it after it's, it's clearly going down. He keeps shooting it. Right. He's got double blaster out and he's still shooting it. Yeah, he takes like <laughs> two to three shots after he's already jumped off. The ship is like 200 feet off the ground. It's clearly going to crash. But then just like still like, no, fuck you. I'm a, I'm a no. badass. Just pow, 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 pow. Anyway. Pow, pow, pow. And Grogu Man, lands he... the Naboo fighter somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I think he lands it with the townsfolk in the outskirts oh. of town. Just the complete domination by Din. I mean, it was kill, kill, double kill, kill, mm -hmm. another mm -hmm. kill, kill, surfing, kill. I mean, utter domination by Din. Din is the best Mandalorian. Well, he's so dominant that he can negotiate with <laughs> Grief right. Karga. Not while he's just flying around, but while he's in the middle of dogfights, making kills. Ready? Thanks for your help, Mando. I decided to take you up on your offer for a tract of land. They got you outnumbered 10 to 1. I like those odds. <laughs> it's just utter, utter domination. Casually dominating. He's like mid-battle playing a game of poker. It doesn't matter. It's like, whatever. Killing people's no problem. Because <laughs> you're thinking, if you're having this conversation, you're on the, you're on the outside of the battle, you're... You're either leaving the battle or coming into the battle, but nothing's happening yet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Maybe you can communicate with somebody on the ground. Nope. He's in the middle of a dogfight. He's like, a, he's like that, what is that? Like the initial D when he's like, oh, I drive this mountain all the time. And I got so good. Just sl things slow down. I don't even notice it anymore. That's, That's him. He's like, I'm, I'm so good at flying, flying this plane and fighting. Like, whatever. Don't even think it about it. It is like initial D. Yeah. So Din's, funny. Din's so good. All right, so let's take a look at the battle from Bo's perspective now. Mm. So Din draws the Corsair off. Bo comes in into the, the vacuum, drops the people off, and then starts taking pot shots at the Corsair to draw them back in to blow it up. Clever. Incredible. So she's dropping off the ground forces. Now she takes pot shots at the Corsair. Heavy pot shots. Yeah. Big glasses. Corsair defense, so ineffective. And this troop transport is outmaneuvering these fighters. Crazy domination. Better mess up that ground. And Bo takes it out. Corsair done. Of course, they never had a chance. It's just utter domination mm -hmm. by mm -hmm. the Mandalorians. They don't take any casualties on the ground or in the air. Complete annihilation of all of the pirate forces and equipment. It's over. They had one plan. Perfect execution. Perfect execution. <laughs> all right. Mando's really good at battle. All right. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. That's okay. Can't deny the outcome. The results worked. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So this, so this now the battle's over. Mm -hmm, Bo-Katan mm -hmm. and the armorer go down into an abandoned forge. The original in, covert. Yeah. Yeah. The original one. They Bo and the armorer are talking about Bo taking the leadership position. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand why Bo took her helmet off. She took her helmet off because the armorer told her to. So the armorer told her to break the creed. And then, and Bo's like, it's against the creed. I don't think I should do that. And the armorer is like, I'm the boss. <laughs> she literally says, do you respect my station? Mm -hmm. Like, like I'm the boss. And so then she tells Bo-Katan to take off her helmet. I mean, I get it. I get it in terms of like, if Bo-Katan goes out and finds more Mandalorians in the galaxy and she, she like has her helmet on, the whole time they may think that she's she's gone crazy she's one of these religious um zealots mm -hmm. and so i get it in that like she needs to fit in with the other mandalorians that aren't in the uh, the children of the watch um i'm just surprised i'm surprised that the armor is like i'm the boss respect my station i tell you to take off your helmet trust me and that all the other mandalorians in, in the uh, the children of the watch are like yeah that's fine sure whatever like so i actually she broke, have, she broke I have... the creed 
Well, first, when I watched it, I thought that she was purposely, Bo-Katan was purposely breaking the creed to throw away the past and start anew as a, Mandal as a Mandalore and Mandalorians. Um, like in The Last Jedi, when they're like, throw away the past, start mm -hmm. anew. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's what they're doing here. But I want to know, is the creed written down somewhere so they could like read through it and be like, okay, there are times when the helmet can come off. <laughs> That's right. You know, <laughs> yeah, lawyer of the creed. <laughs> I mean, you could still, you could read it with like, okay, this is the spirit, but it says True. right here, if you need to take off your helmet to help Mandalore survive, you know, do what it takes. Yeah. It might say something like that. Well, if your your helmet's having like oxygen supply problems and you need to take off your helmet to breathe, like go ahead, go ahead. No, don't worry never about it. take off your helmet. You should suffocate. Suffocate for the creed. This is the way. <laughs> and the helmet isn't the only part of the creed. There are other aspects of the creed, right? Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. somebody needs to sit down and let's read it together as a group and let's figure out what the spirit and the letter of the law is with this thing. Because I'm thinking that there isn't one. It's like a spoken word history and. That way there's no record written down and the armorer just has it all in her head. And so it's actually a really just a her cult. <laughs> it's actually maybe maybe she has a voice modulator and she's actually Moff Gideon. And so that's why she doesn't but, want you. <laughs> yeah, I went for it. But if it's not written down, shouldn't all the Mandalorians have memorized it? So if the armorer comes out, it's like, this is what the creed says. Everyone's like, we memorized it as kids. It, it does not say that. Yeah, and then the, and then the armor just gaslights them just just gaslights them completely 100 <laughs> percent changes their perception of the world and she's like this is the way <laughs> so not only the armor can can fight melee combat uh -huh. with perfect anticipation mm -hmm. solo mm -hmm. she can manipulate people by gaslighting them into a new creed yep she is she's like got, a super villain she's got mind control yep yeah that's maybe she's <laughs> maybe she's moff gideon because she's doing some evil stuff yeah, oh yeah. We don't so like, know. live by she's the code getting, and then I change the code whenever I want. She's getting kind of sus in here. Getting kind of sus. Uh, okay. I, moving on from the Mandalorians after yeah, yeah. they've captured Navarro. There's this chance. Was, was this a chance encounter? Uh, Captain Tavo? Tava? Yeah. Tava. 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 Uh -huh. He's in his X Wing. He sees some stuff on his scanner and then he encounters Moff Gideon's prison shuttle i think this was a chance encounter i mean okay the galaxy is enormous this cannot be a chance encounter no way what is happening galaxy is enormous but shit happens I mean, it's not just enormous it's so inc a galaxy is incomprehensibly enormous there's no way that there has to be the guiding hand of the force going on here right you know, Qui-Gon Jinn, you know, knocked Moff Gideon's shuttle into his... Yeah. Maybe? Ready, 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 ready for this? The galaxy um, is huge. In all the galaxy, we could have been born in different places, but here, you and I are friends. Boom! Coincidences happen! Okay, that is not the right question. <laughs> <laughs> Coincidences happen! It happens! That's right. If you throw a deck of cards up in the air yep the configuration that lands mm -hmm. is so improbable mm -hmm. that the universe should break when that occurs so are you telling me that if i throw a deck of cards in the air there's no chance that they all land in a perfect stack together in order there's zero chance that's false there is some chance it's it's almost zero but it's not zero <laughs> now we're getting it's, into it's effectively about zero <laughs> Okay, we're getting into talk about macrostates and microstates Microstate, yeah, and what yeah, it means yeah. to be a configuration, right? Every time you throw a deck of cards in the air, the configuration that lands will never occur again in the in lifetime of like a billion, billion, billion universes that will ever Statistically, exist. it won't, but it might. But it might, and one has to occur. Something so, has to happen. Just because a coincidence has occurred that is highly unlikely mm -hmm. is not evidence for another coincidence happening. <laughs> yeah. so it's possible that this 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 transport gets thrown up to the air and it just he just captain teva ha happens to find it no, it's possible galaxies it's possible. No, galaxies are so big <laughs> galaxies are so big, so big, big. in 3d <laughs> it's not like oh. not just searching the plane of the galaxy it's like everywhere this could have been well it's all not only 3d it's 4d right that's right 
because you have to intersect in time as well. It doesn't does you no good if a year ago the shuttle followed this path and mm -hmm. you fly a year later. You didn't run into it. Even if even if this shuttle is stationary, everything else is moving. <sighs> cool. Okay. Captain Dave is super lucky. Super lucky. He needs a promotion. Somehow this scanner was telling him that there was a derelict shuttle nearby. Mm -hmm. I didn't really understand it. It's like a horizon on a planet, but that can't be. Maybe this is it. This is saying there's something here where the crosshairs are. Yeah, Not I sure. guess so. I guess so. It's hard he, to read. I, I would even be okay with it being one of these lights up around. Just like, hey, something's there. Go check it yeah, out. Maybe. But it's Go not it it's yeah. not showing combat science because this is a combat combat ship. But, you That's know, true. something off to the side noticed. All right, little blinker. Mm -hmm. I was also wondering, these these buttons and stuff back here. They're behind him, huh? Uh, <laughs> yeah. They must be like, okay, once you've landed or pre-flight, post-flight checks, buttons, that must be what those are. Because there's no way in combat you're like, i got to hit this green button back here. Like, where is it? <laughs> is this the green one? <laughs> Although I have heard some pilots do know, like, through muscle memory like okay that's the button I so they true. can't there is some play because of expertise well i guess that's like us closing our eyes and typing on the keyboard totally doable it's true yeah maybe maybe it's okay maybe it's okay 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 okay, okay. you know my uh so my, my dad when we'd go on long like road trips like he didn't know where i was sitting but he'd always be able to sneak a hand back there and be like give me some of your snacks you know dad text just, that's, that's, they got that's they got right. the muscle memory that's right that is right Okay, okay, okay. Okay, 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 okay. So R2-D2 looking droid, which is not R2-D2, sends a probe into the derelict Imperial <coughs> transport mm -hmm. that has been commandeered by the New Republic. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was scanning, and I was like, hmm, I know what this is inspired by. It's inspired by Alien. Oh, really? Alien's movie, yeah. So just watch. So the first half is... The scanner from Mando. Um, this show, and then the second half is the aliens reference. This cute little scanner guy. So cute scanner. I like, I like him. And here's aliens. Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> right? Look at this homage. Yeah, totally right. Well, look at that. Even with the little gas swirlies. Little gas swirlies and like even even blue. Blue, yeah. That's it. Cool. Just kind of fun. Yeah. So in the entire galaxy, in its vastness and variety of permutations, they actually ended up on similar technology as that in the aliens. So, you know, coincidences, uh, yeah, they happen. No, I, th I think you can conclude that is not a coincidence. That is convergent technological evolution. Coincidental conversion of technology. Can't argue with. Can't argue with that. Hey, <laughs> when when <laughs> hyenas look like dogs and dogs look like dogs, it's a coincidence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The the snout, even though it's co-evolved in many species. No, no, coincidence. I mean, dolphins also have a snout. Yep. Coincidence. Coincidence. Elephants. Coincidence. Coincidence. Foxes? Coincidence that it's a coincidence? Coincidence. Coincidence. Coincidence okay. that these things happen so often? <laughs> Maybe not a coincidence. That's a multi incidence. Multi incidence. Poly incidence? Sure. So <laughs> uh, also, so this is a this is the scanner over here. This is a piece of Beskar. Mm. So he finds the Beskar, relays it back to Coruscant, and Coruscant's like, Mandalorians did it? Okay. If I find a piece of material in a ship, I cannot draw that conclusion. It could have been planted. It's not mm -hmm. like they have Mandalorians have exclusive rights to Beskar, although they kind of do. But if you they, wanted to they, make it look like Mandalorians, this is what you would do. They have exclusive rights to to Beskar before the Great Purge. After the Great Purge, the Empire came in and took all the gas, the Beskar. This is more like saying, like, like we found a piece of candy in the murderer's home. It must have been Hershey's that did it. That's, that's, true. <laughs> <laughs> yep. that's not causal. <laughs> that's right. It might be just coincidence. In this whole great galaxy, the Beskar being here, 
might not mean anything. Or, or it, it might be a coincidence, or it might even be planted, which you have to take into account. Right. Or You'd have to take into account that maybe a Mandalorian put that there on purpose to frame the Mandalorian. I mean, if there were rebel Mandalorians mm. trying to take out another faction of Mandalorians. Oh, that'd be super smart. Oh my gosh. Kind of... Or the Imperial, the new Imperials, I guess the first order that's coming into being right now mm -hmm. is planting this to take out the Mandalorians because they know they're a threat. Ah, starting a hunt for them and getting the New Republic to do it for them. Yeah. It's also possible that it's just stuff in Moff Gideon's pocket. Like he had a thing for Beskar, That's right? True. Like he collected it. Yeah, and since he's a rich, powerful dude, he's like, I want all the metals. I want my gold, I want my diamonds, and I want some Beskar. I want some Beskar. It's... Maybe he was doing that, like, you know, like that poker chick, like stack thing that people do. Maybe he was doing that with, mm -hmm. with Beskar. And then an explosion happened and he got blown away and he's like, gonna like fish around for it. Like, Right, that's right. Yeah. He's like, I there. know where to find some. With all the helmets sitting on the floor of Mandalorian caves. Yep. Yep. That's heck of Beskar down there. Oh, yeah. So the episode ends. The episode ends with Moff Gideon missing. He was supposed to be on the trans prison transport, but he, but he got extracted somehow. We don't know where he is. My theory. Is he in the covert? He's in the covert, but he keeps the helmet on. This is the way. Nobody knows he's there. No way. I guess this way <laughs> they're tactically naive so all he has to do is wear the armor and just mm -hmm. like shoot at stuff and they're like hey, he's one of us all right he's one of us he's just not much of a talker he's a real quiet dude I don't know what are you yeah. gonna do twist his arm yeah. like he, he keeps his helmet on so everyone eats on their own else. no one's gonna ever yeah. see his face yeah. is he in the covert so I want to say no but now that we've talked about it I can't say no. In this great realm of the galaxy, there's so many possibilities. It could be coincidence. It could be he's hiding. No, I think he's off. He's going to go start the First Order, right? This is what this is. He's first, going to go be the first leader. Step, first step is is breaking to the Mandalorian co coverts. I mean, maybe, but I want to say he's off doing leadership stuff. The best leaders don't lead from the front. They lead from behind in the shadows. Mandalorian covert. <laughs> no way I can convince you otherwise. So it's true. He's in the Mandalorian covert, and that how he starts. That's how he starts the first order, which means Bo-Katan will become Snoke. Maybe, yeah. Stay tuned next time when we'll find out. <laughs> is, 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 See this, you guys then. is this theory right?